Presenting Orson Welles as The Third Man. The Lives of Harry Lyme. The fabulous stories of the immortal character, originally created in the motion picture The Third Man, with zither music by Anton Karras. That was the shot that killed Harry Lyme. He died in a sewer beneath Vienna. As those of you know who saw the movie The Third Man, yes, that was the end of Harry Lyme. But it was not the beginning. No. He had many lives. And I can tell you about all of them. How? Because my name is Harry Lyme. Did I ever tell you about the time when I outwitted three very suspicious Wall Street investors at a net profit to yours truly of 55,000 American dollars? No? Well, I will sometime. Anyway, because of that little caper, I decided that an ocean trip would be good for my nerves and for the nerves of some half-dozen New York detectives. And that's how I happened to go on a holiday. A rogue's holiday, if you will. And now, Orson Welles as Harry Lyme, the third man in Rogue's Holiday. Very pleasant. Day or so out of New York, aboard the Queen Anne, bound for Southampton. I was on the passenger list as J. Harrington Lyme. I ate, of course, at the captain's table. Remembering how I'd put the investments of those three Wall Street brokers in my own personal piggy bank, whenever I was asked... And uh, what business are you in, Mr. Lyme? I would smile to myself and answer, I'm an investment broker, Lady Barbara. It is the Lady Barbara Folliot, isn't it? Yes, of course. I thought we'd met. Aren't you also sitting at the captain's table? Yes, that's right. And I seem to remember that there's an empty chair at the table next to yours. You're, you're not traveling alone. I, uh, oh, It's of no importance. You are on a holiday, Mr. Lyme? A holiday? After a manner of speaking, yes. I don't understand. I'm so interested in my work, Lady Barbara, that I'm seldom able to keep from mixing pleasure and business. Oh, you seem so young to be engaged in so complex a business. Investment banker. Mm. I always thought all bankers were portly men in their 50s. Oh, every banker must be able to inspire confidence in his clients, Lady Barbara. The incompetent banker relies on his appearance and his maturity. And you? I rely on my record of success, ma'am. No hurry. No hurry at all. Not while I was on my holiday. Pleasant boat, Queen Anne, scheduled to take six days to Southampton. She was. I had plenty of time. But the question of Lady Barbara Folliot's bank account and the question of the empty chair next to it, the captain's table, preyed a bit on my mind. So I looked at the passenger list. There she was, all right. Lady Barbara Folliot, stateroom A deck, stateroom for two right now. And all it said was, and companion. Hmm. And companion. What did that mean? Not a husband, surely. Looked up the steward for her stateroom. Yes, uh, Stuart, you're in charge of the staterooms along this corridor, aren't you? Yes, sir. Yes. Now, number six, I believe that's Lady Barbara Folliot's stateroom, isn't it? I believe yes, so. Now, I was wondering, just idle curiosity, you know, on the passenger list, she's down as traveling with a companion. But he doesn't say who the companion might be. You don't, sir? Uh, Stuart. Yes, sir. Here, take this for your trouble. Thank you, Now, sir. then, would you tell me who her companion is? No, sir. Not me, sir. Uh, will that be all? Uh, yeah, just a minute. No. Yes, After sir. After all, old man, I slipped you a $10 bill just for a bit of information. The uh, lady in question, sir, slipped me a double sawbuck not to give out that information, sir. A double sawbuck? $20, sir. Ah, yes. Well, then, I'll just take this for your trouble. Hmm? Thank you, Now, sir. then, about Lady Barbara's companion. You were planning a little anky-panky, no doubt, sir. 
Thank you, thank you. Worried, were you, sir, lest the companion might be the husband of the lady in question? Mm, uh, yes, something like that, yes. Looking for a little shipboard romance, no doubt, sir. <laughs> That's it. Now, who's the companion? You've got clear sailing, sir. The companion's not her husband. Matter of fact, uh, sir. Yes? Take my advice and wait till the companion's got her sea legs, sir. A lot cuter, the companion, than Lady Barbara, sir. Uh-huh. Uh, thank you, Stuart. Not at all, sir. <laughs> So, in the next day or so, I found opportunities for squiring Lady Barbara around the boat, cocktails in the evening, a drink or two after dinner, even a game or two of deck tennis in the afternoon. Something she'd said made me prick up my ears and redouble my attentions to her as a prospective, uh, uh, shall I say, client. We were having brandy in the lounge after dinner. Uh, the other day, Mr. Lyon... Yes? You were saying that what you relied on to inspire your clients with confidence... Was my continuing success, yes, that's right. I must say, you... You inspire me with confidence. Well, that's half the battle for an investment banker like me. Have you some problem with your own investments? Uh, to be frank, uh, yes, I have, Mr. Lyme. Uh, we must talk of it further tomorrow. Well, why not now? Uh, thank you. I should like to, but the truth is, I must be... Ah, my... your companion. Uh, the reason for the empty chair next to you at the table. Hmm? Yes, I... She hasn't her sea legs yet, hmm? How did you know it was she, not he? Well, it's, uh, it's no matter. You'll probably be meeting her tomorrow. If she takes a liking to you, Mr. Lyme, as I have, then perhaps we can do some business. That is, if you want to. Well, anyway, I can be of service, Lady Barbara. Next morning, I ran into their steward, and he told me that both ladies were out promenading. Some caution, I went looking for them. True, I was on holiday, but still, if I could turn my hand to a piece of business. Besides, I was curious about this mysterious companion whose name was not even carried on the passenger list. Turning a corner on the promenade deck, I nearly bumped into them. Quickly, I ducked back behind a bulkhead as they passed. Ah, ma princesse. So, my companion was a princess, uh huh. For the rest, I'd seen that she wore a veil close over her hair and face, but no veil could conceal that beauty, and I'd seen something else that interested me, too. A string of pearls, matched pearls. I maneuvered into position for the next round on the promenade. Uh, uh Lady Barbara. Oh, oh, good morning, Mr. Lyme. And this is the nice man I've told you about who's been so kind to me. Uh, Mr. Lyme, this is Miss Jones. How do you do, Mr. Lyme? I am pleased to meet you. Miss Jones? Such an ordinary name for such an extraordinary young lady. <laughs> he makes nice speeches, Barbara, just as you said he did. Uh, perhaps you'll permit me to join you? Oh, I'm so sorry. We were just going in, Mr. Lyme, weren't we, Barbara? Well, then at least, Miss uh, uh, Jones, maybe you will join me and Lady Barbara this evening before dinner. Uh, Mr. Lyme, insist on the practice of buying a cocktail before dinner. I am. Oh, why, I should like that. Only as to cocktails, the ship's doctor told me that perhaps until I am stronger... I should drink champagne. Perfect. I'll make sure there's a bottle of nice for you, Miss... Miss, uh, Jones. Miss Jones, eh? I was sure that while that name Jones was a phony, the pearls weren't. This was promising to become one of the more profitable holidays I'd spent. That evening, I was in the lounge early, a bucket of iced champagne by my side. <laughs> Mr. Lyme. As you promised, my wine. Uh, it's vintage, Miss Jones. I think it should be adequate. Uh, no, Lady Barbara? Oh, she was a little indisposed. She sends her regards. Please sit down. Stuart, I confess, Miss Jones, I'm not too sorry Lady Barbara's not joining us tonight. So? I was looking forward so to meeting you. You've become a lady of mystery. And having met you this morning on the promenade deck, I spent the day looking forward to chatting with you. Oh, evening. more pretty speeches. <laughs> Uh, um, all right, sir? Yes, fine, fine. Oh, uh, fine, thank you. If the wine meets with Miss Jones' approval. Uh, Miss Jones knows little of wines, Mr. Lyon. She is content to leave such matters to you. You have won Lady Barbara's confidence, and that means that you have won mine, too. Then a toast to your improved health, Miss uh, uh, Jones. <laughs> now, why do you always pause? As if you do not remember my name. Oh, my apologies. It's very rude of me. I'm off to start. <laughs> I accept you. Oh! What is it? Well, my string of necklaces. It, it broke. Oh, my pearls. Oh, oh here. Gone. Here, look out. Just, just hold still. You know how many of them there were? Oh, don't move. Uh, yes, yes, there were 64. Just so we can make sure none of them have rolled under... Uh, here. Yeah, here's another. Oh, that's such a stupid thing. No, I really must have... Please, please, you. here. Here's another. Steward. Oh, uh, no, no, it is all right. I think... I think that's all of them. Let me see. Quickly, that's five, ten, fifteen. 
Jim? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, just hang on a second, will you? The lady's string of pearls broke it. Maybe that one or two are still missing somewhere. I don't somewhere. know. I have never done such a bit. Oh. Uh, such a foolish thing. Fifty-five and five is sixty and one, two, three, four. Yes, that is a whole lot of them. Thank you, Stuart. <laughs> uh, lucky thing, ma'am. Uh, oh, Mr. Lyle, do me a great favor. Anything at all. I say you're sure they're all here. Oh, yes, sure. Take them, will you? You have an envelope, perhaps, or a safe pocket? Take them for me to the little jewelry shop. You know the one right on the stairs? Oh, sure, sure. I know the shop, but... Uh, uh, maybe it's still open. You can have the man restring them properly on a strong new string. Or would you do that? Well, I'm not sure I like the idea, really, of wandering around the ship with a handful of loose pearls. These look like the real thing. Oh, no, no. They will be perfectly safe. Now, won't you? For me, such a little favor. If the shop should still be open, please? Leave you? Oh, I shall sit here quite quietly. Just thinking how lucky I am that you were with me when the string broke. Till you return. All right? All right. I'll be back as soon as I can. Orson Welles returns in just a moment as the third man. Now, Orson Welles, as the third man, continues with Rogue's Holiday. So there I was, by myself, free as the wind, with 64 pearls in my pocket. Even one of them, one of the bigger ones, would be worth, well, 5,000 pounds, something like that, nice sum. My stateroom, I had some loose pearls, paste. I could have made the switch easily enough, had plenty of time. And a stupid thief might have done just that. But not Harry Lyon. Oh, no, no. I'd play it smart. I'd wait till later. Went straight to the ship's jeweler. String broker? If you could do a quick but good repair job, old man, I'd be most grateful. Oh, it's easy enough. Just take a moment. Just roll them out here. Hmm. Good ones, aren't they? Well, they look it, don't they? Yes. To an expert's eye, they're very handsome indeed. How much would you estimate that string to be worth, old man? <laughs> if you were to just walk into this shop and ask to buy them, do yeah, you mean? Yeah. Or... Uh, or if you wanted me to find you another 64 like them. No, just walk in and buy them. 50,000 pounds? Oh, I'd say this string uh, closer to 150,000, sir. Well, I was a pretty rich man there for a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> there you are, sir. Yes. That string shouldn't break very quickly. Thank clear. you very much. What do I owe you? Oh, forget it, sir. It's a privilege to be handling those pearls, even if only for a moment. It would have been foolish for me to temper with his fortune while we were still aboard ship. Two days we'd be in Southampton, at which there'd be still plenty of time. The important thing was to get this, this lovely girl's confidence, which I most certainly did. And the second thing was to pry under her incognito. Who was she? Which princess of the blood was anxious to conceal her identity under the plebeian name of Jones? And why? Not until the last night, when the ship was gliding into the soft darkness past Plymouth, when the two of us stood under a sickle moon on the boat deck, did I find out. If she looked lovely in that moonlight... Her pearls looked even lovelier. Oh, what a wonderfully soft warm night. I hadn't noticed. You had not? Oh, the band has begun playing again. It has? Can't you hear it? What's the matter with you? Well, I need all my five senses for something more important than looking at nights or listening to dance bands. Oh, no, no, Mr. Lyon. Harry. Oh, now, Harry, you must know. If the night is warm, it's because it must be to afford you a warm mantle. If the band is playing, it's only to provide a setting for your voice. Miss uh, Jones. My name is... Yes? Anne. Don't move. Please. What price the warmth of the night or the music of the band? Oh, you... You kiss very expertly, Mr. Harry. Harry. Or, or should I say you seem very practiced. If a cat may look at a king... Yes? Then perhaps it's all right. 
If I kiss a princess. Oh, you were not like me. Well, I knew you were a princess, not your name, if that matters. You are uncanny, Mr. Lang. Harry. Uh, since you have gotten this far and since you have shown yourself trustworthy, I can see no reason for not telling you anymore. I am Anne de Bourbon, Princess of Helvigstein. At your service, ma'am. You have heard of our principality? It is in eastern Germany, beyond the Iron Curtain. I should say it was, it is no more. It's all gone except... Except what? I'm not sure. I will not know until I meet my husband in London. If I meet my husband. If? Well, there's uh, some doubt. I have said too much already, Mr. Lyme. It, it is too bad. It has been a pleasant evening. I was almost able to forget for a moment. Good night. She was gone, just like that. At least I knew now who she was. Whether I'd be able to find her again in London, whether I'd frightened her away, and whether my chance at that string of pearls by letting her know that I knew she was a princess, all these things I was a little nervous about. Till next day, just as I was getting ready to disembark in Southampton, Lady Barbara came up to me rather quickly. Uh, Mr. Lyme, here, a note. A note from... Uh, read it, please. After last night, I've been worried for fear I... I might just possibly have said something which, you know, might, might have offended your friend, Miss uh, Jones. Offended her? Oh, read the note. The note paper bore a crest, a column that was one sheet of heavy paper folded once. There was no salutation. The note said, As you said, a cat may look at a king. It might be interesting and fun to experiment once more with your other statement, the one about a princess. There was no signature. But none was necessary. Do you feel better? Uh, yes, but... She uh, asked me to tell you that we would be stopping at the Carlton. We'll hope to see you then. So she had arranged that we should meet again, after all. But when we met again, away from the dangerous confines of an ocean liner, I proposed to relieve her lovely neck of those lovely pearls. Oh, well, sure, I was on a holiday and sentiment was involved, but... These were factors that had to be disregarded. My scheme was foolproof. As it turned out, the scheme wasn't needed. The first time I saw her in the sitting room of her Carlton suite. Mr. Lyme. Oh. oh. All right, Harry. Harry, you have already done me one favor. I hate to ask you, I've but... told you I'm at your service, Miss uh, Jones. No, no. Call me, Anne, please. Yes. If you want me, Highness, I shall be... At... Oh, no, no. Don't leave, Barbara. Stay with us. You know the favor I have to ask of Barry anyway. Uh, I yes, started me. to say anything short of murder, Anne. Oh, no, no, it's nothing like that. First, listen. On shipboard, you remember, I told you I was to meet my husband. If, you said. Hmm? Yes, if. This is the if. Years ago, Harry, when the Red Army was driving through East Germany, we had to flee. My husband ate what was valuable that we had. Jewels, some gold plate, a pitiful collection, really. But all we had. He hid it himself. He alone knew where was he. <laughs> he trusted in those days no one. Then, a few weeks ago, we planned to get it back. It would cost us a lot, we knew. Bribes, the purchase of a plane, fee for the pilot, more bribes and always more bribes. Klaus had to fly into Helvigstein, don't you see, himself. A mad and dangerous idea. I just think so. But he refused to tell anyone else where his cachet was. He could not trust anyone. I went to America to raise some funds that was needed. Hmm. Lady Barbara has been good enough to lend us more. But just today, I have learned that even more is needed. More money? Oh, Mr. Lyme, say no quickly if you cannot do me this favor. But I have exhausted all my other resources. If you knew how much it costs to bribe these officials over here. Oh, I bet. How, how much do you need? Oh, you will do it? It's just a loan, mind you. It's a pleasure. Lady Barbara's investment will drain her all we need at the first of the next quarter. And then I can repay please, you with Please, please, how much do you need? Ten thousand American dollars. It is too much? I don't think so. No, no. Certainly not. And see, for security, oh, for no. security, on your loan or here, you will take this. My pearls. You have already once guarded them well. Oh, please. I, I wouldn't dream I mean, of... Yes, I insist. Otherwise, I will not even ask you for the loan of the ten thousand American dollars. Oh, oh well, if you insist. Oh, here, yeah. take them. Now, how can we arrange to get the money? Well, I have more than that here in the hotel safe in American dollars, too. Just let me ring the desk. A trip downstairs in the lift, 
Elevator to you, back up again to my room and over to hers. I handed her ten bills. She handed me the pearls. We smiled, shook hands on the deal, and I walked out of her room with a fortune in my pocket. I called for a celebration. Pal of mine runs a pub saloon to you in London. I use it as a sort of message center. I have letters sent me there. My pal knows all the gossip who's in town, who swindled whom, all the news. I need my business, so I, I went straight to him. Harry, I haven't seen you for months. Afternoon, Barney. Give me a whiskey and soda, double whiskey and soda. None of your bar whiskey. There's something good. One for yourself. I'm celebrating. So am I, man. So am I. I'm celebrating your return. Oh, <laughs> well, good. How long have you been in England? Oh, just a little uh, while. Too hot for you in the States, was it? Look, can we have a drink somewhere in private? Yeah, sure. Why not? Follow me. Got onto something good, have you? I'll be leaving London pretty quick, Barney. I should go to Europe, France, I guess maybe Italy. Why, you've only just got here. I pulled a quick one. They may be looking for me in London sooner than I like to think. Uh Uh-huh. What for? Unless it's something you think I shouldn't know about. Look, look, Barney. Well, now, aren't they beauties? Uh, real thing, aren't they? I had them priced by a jeweler who said he'd ask 150,000 pounds for them. Oh, that should keep you in cigarettes for a week or two. (laughs) Not bad. Not bad at all. Not half bad. Not, uh, in fact, a quarter better. Let me have a look. Do you mind? Look them over all you want, Barney. I'll fence them in Paris somewhere. This is your last look, old man. Uh Uh-huh. Where did you say you got them? Off a German princess. She gave them to me as a security on a loan. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. German princess, is it? Mm, Yes, French-born, I think. French-born, you think? Yes. Name of what? Uh, Anne de Bourbon, princess of Elvigstein. (laughs) Oh. Yes, very good. Uh, (laughs) What's so funny? (laughs) What's so very funny? (laughs) Anne de Bourbon. Princess the Elwig side. All right, old man. All right, better let me in on the joke. <laughs> I thought these pearls looked funny, although you said they weren't jam. You're I... crazy. Well, Barney, I had them priced myself. Maybe you had some pearls priced, but not these, my boy. You've been had. The oldest trick in the world. Pulled on you, Harry Lyme. Now, you're lying. Now, don't try to pull your tricks on me, Barney. A joke's a joke, but... Oh, I don't have to. It's been pulled already. Harry, me bucko... I know who Andy Bourbon is. I know who the Princess von Elwigstein is, too. She's a slick little article. Oh, no. But she ain't German. She's not French-born, and I don't think you'll ever find any Elwigstein on no map. She's Doris Jones. Oh. That's who she is. And she was born right here in Clapham. That's where she was born. And she took you and shook you for uh, how much? I gave her 10,000 American dollars. I don't believe you. I'll die. <laughs> The oldest gang in the world has pulled on none other than Harry Lyme himself. I'll die. <laughs> Room th- 316, please. Harry, when this news gets around, boy. That's right. I'm calling Miss Jones. No, never mind. Oh. Well, do I win me bet? And did you lose your 10,000 American dollars? Yes. Well, I've got her these. These pearls. Oh, better than nothing, Gary. It's, it's a good imitation. Must be worth 50 pounds. 50 pounds? Well, I'm on my holiday. I come out ahead after all. What? Well, what about your 10,000 well, American I dollars? Your slick little article from Clapham tries to pass that 10,000, Barney. They're counterfeit. That'll teach Miss uh, Jones to try anything fast with Harry Lyme. Lime returns in just a moment. Seems that Miss uh, Jones 
found herself a legitimate prince, one of those exiles in Portugal, and settled down with him in Lisbon. I ran into her at Estoril a couple of seasons later. She was a real princess now. But it seems his highness isn't as young as he was and probably never was, so the princess is very democratic. She asked me to their place for dinner, said she thought I'd be interested in some of the interior decorations. I was. She complimented me on my nice set of pearl studs, which she recognized, and showed me into the cloakroom, which was entirely wallpapered in American $10 bills, or a reasonable facsimile. I recognized them. No hard feelings, you understand. It's a pleasant little caper, and I always enjoy moving about amongst the upper classes. It's so educational. Well, goodbye for now. Don't take any lead nickels. And remember, if you can't manage to resist temptation, be sure you get it appraised. <laughs>